New storms on the way in the Eastern Pacific on today's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for July 30th. Whilst we still have no active storms, they are uh, quite forthcoming by the looks of things. We've got a very high chance of development in the Eastern Pacific, possibly two. And in the Atlantic, a uh, chance is still there for that area of interest in the main development region. We're still code unclassified right now. The threat is low for the time being. Day 60 in the Atlantic hurricane season and we're still giving a 40% chance to that area of interest in the central Atlantic expected to pull up northwestwards and then ride along the lesser and greater Antilles and end up in the Gulf of Mexico where it could end up strengthening. In the eastern Pacific we're looking at three areas of interest still, 90% chance on that area of interest in the middle south of Mexico, 94E, 30% further west could end up getting caught up in all of that and a 60% behind that could also develop into a powerful hurricane later on in the week into next week. And in the Western Pacific, we've put it down to 10% for this area of interest that may end up developing later on in the week now. It doesn't look like it's going to strengthen right now. There's really hardly anything of it. And so the good news there is the Western Pacific is pretty quiet now. North Indian Ocean, we have no areas of interest here either, but a lot of cloud cover in the area along the northern part of the Bay of Bengal, along the east coast of India, and over Myanmar and Thailand. And into the southwest Indian Ocean, there's really very little going on here as well, but quite a bit of cloud cover further east in the basin. But in general, for most of those land areas involved, we're looking at still uh, pleasant, calm conditions in these winter months as it is down there in those upper latitudes. So let's take a look at Invest 94E then. It is currently 421 kilometers from Acapulco, 426 from Zihuatanejo, 453 from Lazaro Cadenas, 615 from Manzanillo, and 811 from Puerto Vallarta in Mexico. This system ex expected to move west northwestly. It is doing so at the moment. Uh, movement speed is about five or six miles per hour, not very fast, um, but we expect that it will pick up pace gradually as we go on throughout the week. It shouldn't be a land threat. So let's take a look at the latest satellite imagery then. First of all, looking at Invest 94E. Well, there it is. It's been looking much better in those last few hours. Convection waned early on yesterday evening, but it's really built up overnight and is now starting to look like a bona fide tropical storm. Although we don't have any uh, direct evidence of that yet, it wouldn't surprise me if the National Hurricane Centre pulled the trigger later today. Here's the Atlantic system, uh, not invested yet, uh, but you can clearly see it there. Uh, uh, with a uh, tenuous circulation at the lower levels, very little convection right now, and you can see dry air and Saharan dust even on that northwestern side there in that dry slot with just that little bit of convection. Here's another look at Invest 94E, and pretty soon you'll be able to see these floater views on the automated stream that we're running side by side as well on the Fawcettine YouTube channel. Uh, but there it is, moving gradually westwards, um, blowing up large amounts of convection, as you can clearly see there, into the minus 80s in quite a few spots there uh, along the western and southern side of what the would be centre would be. There was an ASCAP pass much earlier on in the night, uh, which didn't suggest anything was happening yet, but that was a long time before the convection really started blowing up and there's another view uh, actually this is the western pacific invest 90w that's the one we're tracking right now that 10 percent just north of the northern uh, sorry the eastern micronesian islands there uh, way out over the open ocean uh, moving towards the northwest away from those small land masses wide shot of the east coast of the United States uh, throwing up a uh, frontal system there quite weak around Bermuda up to Nova Scotia the Caribbean looking uh, pretty dormant as well there's just a little low there by the looks of things near Jamaica probably providing small amounts of rain and thunderstorms but in general it is a quiet picture eastern Atlantic off the coast of Africa uh, you can see one or two low level systems there at low latitude gradually moving off westwards one or two tropical waves uh, but nothing very exciting 
Keystone Pacific, obviously, 94E is front and center there, you can see on that picture. Uh, the other system behind it hasn't yet developed uh, or, or is traceable, but obviously we'll be keeping watch. And this is the Western Pacific, the rest of the Western Pacific, um, when you can see a big uh, frontal system there moving southwards, and the tail end of that could produce one or two storms later on in the week. And this is the uh, North Indian Ocean region, a lot of monsoonal showers uh, pushing through the uh, coast of Myanmar and this is the Arabian Sea where we've got a few more showers uh, creeping on off the west coast of India and across Pakistan there. So lots of showers in that zone. Well, sea surface temperatures remain very warm off the coast of Mexico and actually creeping up further out to sea there as well, over 30 degrees Celsius in a few spots and where that invest is right now it is around 30 degrees too. Northeastern quadrant of the Gulf of Mexico is absolutely scintillating with that warmth there, up to 32 degrees in quite a few spots and off the east coast of Florida and the northern Bahamas as well, those temperatures are very elevated, that system could be heading there. Western Pacific, uh, very high sea surface temperatures extending far north as well off the coast of Kyushu now. Temperatures pushing over 30 degrees Celsius there and uh, across the rest of the outer Japanese islands, very warm. North Indian Ocean, uh, decent temperatures still in the Bay of Bengal, the one or two cooler spots there uh, further towards the southwest along the coast of India. Compared to average, well, it is still well above average for most of the areas that matter. The Gulf of Mexico and the uh, Caribbean and the main development region of the Atlantic looking good, up to 3 degrees above average. Eastern Pacific has a big hot spot there ahead of Invest 94E now as well. And in the Western Pacific, it's near normal in the uh, tropical zone there, um, a little bit above average to the southeast, but over near Japan, extremely warm temperatures compared to normal. Oceanic heat content though is still very elevated in the Western Pacific as you would expect very high amounts of energy uh, for potential rapidly intensifying storms. Uh, the gamey uh, drop has uh, rebuilt itself again there southeast of Taiwan into the yellows once again. Look at the Atlantic though we're really sizzling in a few spots there high amounts of oceanic heat content from south of Puerto Rico even east of there actually through the Leeward Islands through Jamaica, Western Caribbean, into the Gulf of Mexico and some spots are really growing into the yellows there off the Bahamas as well. So let's check the GFS computer model for the next five days. Looking first of all at the Eastern Pacific where we'll eventually see the development of these systems. GFS actually delays the development of Invest 94E there. I'm not sure whether that will happen looking at it right now. But eventually it does blow up into a hurricane, a substantial hurricane, probably Category 2. If it does develop quicker than expected from the model, which is likely by the looks of things, who knows, it may end up getting a bit stronger than that. Southwest side there, another system, that's that 30%. And on the right hand side that tropical storm developing quite large system there uh, towards the end of that five day period. Looking up to seven days across the Atlantic, um, GFS still not very confident on anything forming in the short range up to day five but a lot of the models are developing something around the seven day period either east or west of the coast of Florida. We're still not sure yet, ECMWF has been trending east GFS has been trending west. Uh, in any case, we're looking at possibly four inches of rain over parts of the Florida Peninsula there. That's the Tampa Bay area there at 3.6 inches, nearly 100 millimeters. In Puerto Rico, up to five inches there as well. And across Hispaniola, over five inches too. So that's nearly 150 millimeters of rain there. Now look what happens in the longer range. I don't know what happens to that western system. It gets chugged around and thrown up towards the north there after that first storm. And then the second one becoming a powerful hurricane as well. And then we have this Atlantic feature uh, developing in the northeast Gulf of Mexico. Very odd track, it has to be said. Uh, brushing across the uh, coast of Louisiana and then moving on towards Texas. Powerful hurricane there as well. Probably category two. And then arriving again in Texas, would you believe it? Just after Beryl, possibly another one. And in the medium range in the Western Pacific as well, uh, throwing up this enormous system, big comma shape there, uh, which tries to become a fully fledged typhoon. I'm not sure it manages it looking at its appearance there. Off the right hand side of it, you see another little uh, disturbance there. That's that current 10% system that gets wrapped up into all of that. Uh, so that's what the Westpac is doing. Scan the barcode and that will take you through to the Force 13 merch store where you can take a look at all our items as well as our full season and individual storm animations on request at any time. 
and are still waiting for Hone t-shirt still available and we didn't see it in the model runs again either it looks like the wait continues well in the silly range that storm moving inland over Texas survives quite a way actually and then that hurricane moving off towards the west northwest and then another system this would be possibly number four in the eastern Pacific in this run becoming a hurricane as well so could it mean that the eastern Pacific finally means business or are these models going to be proved wrong again and we'll be throwing ourselves uh, we're tearing our hair out of what's happening in the eastern Pacific surely we're going to see some strong hurricanes and hopefully they move out to sea and not affect any land areas. See at the very end there, that system going on possibly to affect Hawaii. In the long range there in the Western Pacific as well, um, what's left of that big system? Uh, not much by the looks of things. What happens? Are there any more systems? Well, maybe a potential storm trying to develop from that big, big uh, area. Uh, and then maybe another small scale system or smaller tropical storm trying to form way out east there, not far from the international dateline. In fact, there it is crossing the dateline and into the Western Pacific, possibly becoming something. But that is super long range well on this day it was 13 years ago when we had a category 5 it was typhoon muifa in 2011 and that was heading towards the northwest there in the western pacific very powerful storm we also had knock 10 dying off over the indochina region and we had 5e in the eastern pacific and i've forgotten my notes already what that would become i think it was eugene actually uh, which would become a powerful category 4 in the eastern pacific as it moved west northwestwards so that's how things were. Also, a Don had just died as well over Texas, uh, but there was no evidence of it because it completely capitulated. One of the biggest capitulations I've ever seen of a tropical cyclone just before it made landfall. Well, back to this year, the next name isn't Don, it's Debbie in the Atlantic. In the Eastern Pacific, it's Carlotta, which we may be seeing very shortly. So the following name is Daniel. And in the Central Pacific, the name is still Hone, which we've got no chance of seeing anytime soon. In the Western Pacific, the next name is Maria, that bogey storm name. Uh, the last two uh, were pretty uh, destructive. And in the North Indian Ocean, the next name is Asna. Looking towards the Southern Hemisphere in the Southwest Indian Ocean, possibly, uh, well, no sign of an early start really, but later on we'll be getting Robin. In the Southwest Indian Ocean, the next name is Ansha, and in the South Pacific, it's Pitta. That's all from today's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow. Become an ultimate fan today.